What's happening, everybody? So, I had a viewer, H. Kennedy McGovern, this video is for you, uh, post up a really good question, and it's a question that's more or less based on fundamentals. This is some information that a lot of times car guys just kind of take for granted that they know, yeah, but sometimes they don't really know as much as they think they do. And the question basically went like this. Why is it that if a manufacturer rates an engine, say it's like my 392 and it's rated at 485, you know, why is it that it puts down, say, 420 horsepower as opposed to that 485 horsepower to the wheels? Why is there a difference? Well, the reason for that difference is you have frictional losses that take place from the engine through your drive line through your differential and then out to the rear wheels. And when I said drive line, I really should have said transmission. The whole thing is a drive line. Uh, but the frictional losses, uh, basically you're looking at a percentage of the power coming from the engine that will be consumed before it is actually put to the ground. Uh, typical losses, well, uh, for an automatic transmission, and this is a modern transmission, I'm not talking about an older one like a three-speed, uh, and especially a, a, a non-lockup converter transmission, but normally an automatic transmission, you'll lose about, yeah, about 15 to 17%. Uh, I know that there's some guys out there that are just freaking out, saying, ah, you lose more. You really don't. Modern automatic transmissions are overwhelmingly uh, better at being efficient uh, in, in terms of transferring power. Uh, the older transmissions were much, much less efficient, and uh, you would get numbers around 20% and in some cases 22, 24%, uh, mainly due to the slip of that torque converter. So there's that reason right there. Um, but again, uh, a manual transmissions accepted rule of thumb is 15% across the board. Now, uh, when you get your number from the dyno, uh, and we're talking about an inertia style dyno here, not an eddy current dyno, that reads power a little bit differently. Uh, by the way, eddy current dynos will read about 10%, give or take, less than an inertia style, but usually the number that guys will quote is from an inertia style dyno. Uh, what you do is you get that number and you divide by 0.85. So uh, I'll give you an example. If you have a 100 horsepower engine, like a laboratory grade engine, and it's being run through a manual transmission that is just known to be a 15% parasitic loss, uh, you can expect to have 85 horsepower. Uh, but if you take the number 85 and multiply it times 1.15, you'll find that that number is not quite 100. It's something like 97 or 98. So just remember that to get the right number, you have to divide by 0.85. So there you go. Uh, now to get into those frictional losses a little bit more, uh, let's say you take that same transmission behind that 100 horsepower engine and you bolt it to the back of an engine making say 300 horsepower. Well, in that respect, you're not going to have a 15 horsepower or foot pound of torque loss. You're gonna have more like a 45 horsepower loss. And again, uh, the, the actual load is what determines that frictional loss. The more load you put on something, the more friction that you're going to generate. Also, the harder you spin the fluids that are either in the transmission or uh, for the case of an automatic in that torque converter, again, the more loss that you're going to see. But typically, it's more or less a linear loss rate of around 15%. So that'll explain to you why, say, smaller engines may have less parasitic loss, at least in terms of an actual number, but the percentage is typically going to fall in line with that 15% number. Um, so I hope that answered the question. Um, but the thing is, is that I wanted to get into, you know, discussing this a little bit because a lot of times guys will, you know, you'll hear a horsepower number and usually in the modern vernacular, you're really talking about horsepower to the rear wheels. Most guys will talk about that power number to the rear wheels, mainly because that's what we have to measure our power output with. Uh, very, very few people have access to an engine dyno, and even those that will purchase a crate engine with a known horsepower number associated to it, you gotta remember that that is a dyno figure. That can even be with uh, no front engine accessory drive, which means possibly no water pump. Uh, might not even be spinning an alternator, uh, no fans or anything like that. So 
Uh, what guys want to hear about is how much power does it actually put to the rear wheels because that's really where it matters. It doesn't matter if you've got a 550 horsepower engine that really only can muster 300 horsepower to the wheels because of a restrictive exhaust system or you know a lot of accessory drives or things like that. So again, that's more the reason for those numbers. Now, I do want to get into this. Um, the, there were some specifics asked and it was uh, that 375 horse 57 putting down 333. Um, and that's with the automatic. Uh, yeah, th that that engine doesn't really follow the the the, um, the formula so well, basically because that engine is underrated. Uh, but the the six four really isn't. Um, the six four is a 485 horsepower engine. If you back math it now, if you do that math and let's say you're at 420 and you get this number like 494 or 497, whatever it comes up to. Um, that doesn't mean that that's how much power the engine is making. You also have to remember a couple of things. You have different ratings of horsepower. You have uncorrected, which means just in the ambient temperatures and humidity that you have. You have a standard correction, which is racer correction. Basically, that's old, tiny, gross horsepower, SAE type of a correction, which would be STD in this case. Um, and that number is calculated at about 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and I want to say it's fairly low humidity. I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, the point is is that that number will always show higher uh, than a SAE number, which will be uh, a, basically rating at a higher temperature, 70 degrees. So you're correcting, you have to correct to a higher temperature uh, and a little bit lower, I believe, barometric pressure with the SAE standard. But then it gets a little bit more tricky. See, once you factor in the SAE correction factors, you're still gonna be left with an engine that may look like it's making a little bit more than what the manufacturer claims. That's because the SAE standards have changed. Uh, the customary SAE standard versus the new SAE standard, and I say new, but it's really probably at this point 10 years old or more. Uh, basically what it is, it's gonna average about 4% less than the typical SAE number. So uh, once you factor in all the math and you're honest with yourself when you do it, you'll find that the 392 is a pretty honest 485 horsepower. The 5.7 is a pretty dishonest 390 horsepower as opposed to around 375 or so. So at any rate, I know that's kind of the long way around the explanation, but you know, these are the type of questions that I like, you know, and when you understand, you know, this type of a conversation, in other words, when you understand what we're talking about when I say horsepower to the rear wheels on an eddy current dyno, you know that you can take that number and, you know, you know, divide it by say 0.8 or 0.83 and get a pretty solid indication of how much flywheel horsepower I'm making. Or if it's an inertia style dyno, you know that you can take that number, divide it by about 0.85 and that's really what that engine is creating. And this also helps to understand you know, when you're watching TV shows or seeing something on the internet with an engine on a dyno, you have to realize that those engines are in optimum conditions and chances are they aren't running a front engine accessory drive. So let's say it makes 500 horsepower on an engine dyno. Well, that's great, but as the owner of that engine, you would be, you would be bullshitting yourself to think that that engine is actually 500 horsepower because once you put a transmission behind it, if it's an automatic, bolt up your torque converter and the transmission along with the rear end, all the fluids that come with it, a front engine accessory drive, headers that will actually fit and work on the street, which is another topic altogether with an exhaust system that'll work on the street, um, an air induction system and everything else, you would be surprised how many 500 horsepower engines, and this is the point I'm trying to make, you would be shocked at the number of 500 horsepower engines that I've seen put down 320 horsepower to the rear wheels. It's just not that uncommon. Guys get butt hurt because their 500 horsepower engine isn't really making 500 horsepower. It's because it doesn't have to drive a transmission, a torque converter, a rear gear, work its way through fluids, um, and drive the front engine accessory drive, and it doesn't have free access to awesome air. So again, just wanted to throw that in as my own little rant on engine dynos. So at any rate, again, I hope that helps out. Thank you so much for the question. 
And that's a wrap. Adios.